When Zara dropped her apple, it fell to the ground. When she dropped her kite, it fell to the ground. And when she dropped her balloon, well, that, too, fell to the ground. But then Zara wondered, why do things fall to the ground when I drop them? Why don't they just float away? And so began Zara's big question. Hi, I'm here. This is my channel. And today we're talking about gravity. So let's fly to the answer. To help answer this question, first we need to talk about Newton. He was an awesome scientist who lived hundreds of years ago. And he discovered three amazing things. Number one, objects attract each other. Number two, the more massive an object is, the stronger its attraction is. And number three, the closer two objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. Now these three ideas might seem pretty random, but when you put them together, they help explain why Zara's apple falls to the ground instead of floating away. So let's start at the beginning. All objects in the universe attract each other. Everything is made of atoms, and atoms are attracted to other atoms. And when you have lots and lots of atoms, like in a planet or a star or a human, well, those atoms attract each other. Two, so you and your apple are attracted to each other. In fact, right now you and your apple are falling toward each other. But you and your apple are also both falling around in circles around the Earth. So which one of these falls to the ground? Well, remember what Newton said? The more massive an object is, the stronger its attraction is. The Earth is much more massive than you or your apple, so its gravitational attraction is stronger. That means the Earth pulls on you and your apple with a greater force than you or your apple pull on the Earth. So even though you and your apple are both attracted to each other, the Earth wins. So instead of falling toward each other, you and your apple both fall toward the Earth. And that is because of gravity. The Earth's gravity pulls everything toward it. But wait, you're falling around the Earth. Doesn't that mean your apple should be floating away? Not so fast. Remember what Newton said? The closer two objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. Even though the Earth's gravity pulls everything toward it, the Earth is really far away from most of the stuff in space. Like, look up, there's a star for a hundred times more massive than the Earth. And even though the star's gravity is stronger than the Earth's gravity, we don't feel it because the star is so far away. Only when an object gets close enough to the Earth can we feel its gravity. And the closer an object is to the Earth, the stronger the Earth's gravity is. So even though the Earth's gravity pulls you and your apple toward it, the ground is close enough to the Earth that we can feel the Earth's gravity. So your apple doesn't float away. Instead, it falls to the ground. And now you know that the Earth's gravity keeps your feet on the ground. But the Earth isn't the only thing with gravity. Every object in the universe attracts every other object with gravity. That means that everything has gravity, including you, me, the apple, the kite, and even the balloon. But remember, the more massive an object is, the stronger its attraction is. So the Earth has much stronger gravity than you, me, the apple, or the balloon. So when you drop your balloon, the Earth's gravity pulls it toward the ground. But what about the moon? Does the moon have gravity? Of course it does. In fact, the moon is big enough that its gravity is strong enough to pull stuff toward it. In fact, every single day the moon pulls on Earth's oceans and causes tides. So remember, everything has gravity. And while the Earth has a lot of gravity, the moon's gravity is strong enough to move the ocean. But how could the moon have gravity if it's not made of anything? Well, remember, everything is made of atoms, and those atoms have gravity. The moon is made of rock and metal, which is made of atoms, which means it is gravity. But why does the moon go around the Earth if the moon's gravity pulls it toward itself? Remember, everything is attracted to everything else. And the closer two objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. The Earth and the Moon are attracted to each other. And the Earth is much more massive than the Moon, so its gravity is stronger. So the Earth pulls the Moon toward it. But the Moon is also close enough to the Earth that we can feel the Earth's gravity. 
so the Earth pulls the moon in a circle around it, and that means the Earth's gravity keeps the moon in orbit around Earth. In fact, the same thing is happening with the Earth. The sun is much more massive than the Earth, so its gravity is much stronger than the Earth's gravity. So the sun pulls the Earth in a circle around it, and that means the sun's gravity keeps the Earth in orbit around it. So remember, everything in the universe is attracted to everything else, and the closer two objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. The more massive an object is, the stronger its attraction is, and those three laws help explain how gravity works. But why do we call the force that brings Zara's apple back to the ground the Earth's gravity instead of calling it the gravity of the apple or the gravity of the kite or the gravity of the balloon? Well, remember, the more massive an object is, the stronger its gravitational attraction is. And the Earth is much more massive than the kite, the apple, or the balloon. So when you drop the apple, the Earth's gravity is much more influential than the apple's gravity. So we call the force that brings Zara's apple back to the ground the Earth's gravity. But wait, you said that everything is attracted to everything else. If that's true, then shouldn't the apple be attracted to the kite? Shouldn't the balloon be attracted to the kite? Shouldn't the Earth be attracted to the kite? Well, yes, it should. But remember, the closer the objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. So the apple is close enough to the kite that we can feel a force between them. That force is called friction. The balloon is farther away from the kite, so the force between them is weaker. We don't notice that force. The earth is really far away from the kite, so the force between them is really weak. We don't notice that force either. So remember, everything has gravity. The more massive an object is, the stronger its attraction is. The closer two objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. And that's how gravity works. And now you know that the Earth's gravity keeps your feet on the ground. Before we wrap up, let's quickly review everything you learned in this episode. Everything in the universe is attracted to everything else. Everything has gravity. The more massive an object is, the stronger its attraction is. The closer two objects are to each other, the stronger the force between them. That means the Earth has gravity, the Moon has gravity, you have gravity, I have gravity, the kite has gravity, the balloon has gravity, and the apple has gravity. The Earth's gravity keeps your feet on the ground. The Earth's gravity pulls the Moon in a circle around Earth. The sun's gravity pulls the earth in a circle around it. And when you drop your apple, the earth's gravity pulls it toward the ground. Gravity is so cool. I wonder what else we can explore with science. Do you have an awesome science question you want answered? Ask us below. And remember, stay curious. The world is full of awesome. Gravity.